The Arduino language is often quite misunderstood by many people. Here are 10 points to help you understand what it is and how to use it better in your project. Point number one, what is the Arduino language? Well, the Arduino language is a mix of different things. It is basically a subset of C and C++ with some limitations we are going to see just a bit later. And on top of that, you get access to new features, data types, etc. from the Arduino library. Point number two, C++ limitations. So if the Arduino language is a subset of C++, then does that mean you can use all the C++ functionalities? Unfortunately, the answer is no. For example, you can't use the standard library, which contains many useful C++ features. Also, you won't be able to use exceptions in your code. And remember that you are programming on a microcontroller with a very limited computation power compared to a normal computer with microprocessors. So you won't be able to use multi-threadings as well, for example, with the STD thread library that is not available on Arduino. Point number three, object-oriented programming. Can you use OOP in your Arduino programs? Well, the answer is yes. Even if you don't see many people using OOP for Arduino, it is a great way to make your programs more readable, scalable, and modular. Point number four, including the Arduino library. The Arduino library contains a lot of useful stuff, such as the digital write and digital write functions, the serial library, etc., etc. And when you write an Arduino program, actually, here, this is the main program of the project, you have to know that this line, the include arduino.h, is automatically added for you but only in the main file, okay, the main file which should have a .ino extension. So in this main file, you don't need to include arduino.h. Okay, that will be automatically done for you when you compile the code here. However, if you are using multiple files, like I'm doing here, well, in those files, if you want to use the Arduino functionalities, you have to include the Arduino header. So that's why in my LED functions.h here, in my header file for the LED functions, I include the Arduino library. If I don't do this, then when I write Arduino functionalities in my code, I'm going to get an error at compilation time. Point number five, setup and loop functions. Usually a C or C++ program starts its execution from the main function. But as you can see here on the Arduino program, there is no such thing as a main function. In fact, you have two other mandatory functions that you need to implement. The setup function, so void setup, and void loop. The setup function will be called once and only once as soon as the program starts its execution. And after that, the loop function will be called indefinitely. As soon as the loop is finished, it will be called over and over again until you power off the Arduino board or you restart the program. Point number six, initializing variables. In C and C++, if you declare a variable like this without initializing it, then you don't know what is its first value. Okay, it could be anything. And not initializing a variable is definitely not a good practice. With the Arduino language, as soon as you declare a variable, Arduino will initialize it to zero for you. So this or this is the same for an integer variable. As you can see, when I just print the number without initializing any value, I get zero. And of course, this will depend on the data type for the variable you have. For integers, the value is zero. For float number, you will have 0.0. .0. And if you try to initialize a pointer without anything, you just get a null pointer. Point number seven, functions prototypes. Usually in C and C++, you have to first declare your functions with a prototype and then you can write uh, the functions. 
with Arduino, well, the Arduino IDE will automatically do that for you. So if I remove this, here you can see with a normal C++ program, this is not going to work because function B is actually uh, defined after the function A and we don't have any prototype. But with Arduino, if I run the program, if I just compile the program, actually, it's compiling, done compiling, so it works. The prototype is automatically added for you. However, as a best practice, you should write prototypes for your functions and even better, put your functions, so those functions here, in a header file, a .h or .hpp file. So the prototypes go into a header file and then the implementation for the function goes into a .cpp file, okay, that is linked to the header file. Then from your main program, you can include the header file and use and call the functions that you have declared and implemented. Point number eight, Arduino specific types. If you use types such as byte or string with an uppercase S, well, those are only existing within the Arduino library. So if you try to execute some of that code in a normal C++ program, it won't work because the types won't be recognized. Point number nine, project folder organization. First, programs are not called programs, but sketches, you can see here, sketch. The main file for your Arduino sketch will contain the void setup and the void loop functions. And this file, this main file, you don't see the extension here, but it will be saved with an INO extension. And all other files you create can be C, C++, or header files. Now the sketch will be saved in a particular way. So if you want to see where the sketch is, you can go here on sketch and then show sketch folder here. You have the uh, shortcut if you want to. And here you can see, so the name of my project is test split files. I have my test split files .ino, which corresponds to that file. And it's very important to make it work with the Arduino IDE. This file should be in a folder that has the same name as the file. Okay, as you can see, this is the exact same name. And actually, this is automatically done for you when you save the project. Okay, when you save the project here, it will create a folder and put the file with an INO extension. And then you can create as many files as you want. Okay, you just put them here and they will appear here on the Arduino ID. So .h, .hpp, .c, .cpp files, etc. And now this folder, usually this folder will be placed inside your Arduino folder. So your Arduino folder is, you can see in file preferences, you can see the sketchbook location. And this is where your programs will be saved. So if you want, you can change that right here. And let's go back here. So on your Arduino folder, you have your different projects and you also have a folder named libraries. And inside that folder libraries, this is where you are going to install the different libraries. So if you want to use a library inside any of your projects, this library will be installed here. And point number 10, using another IDE with Arduino. So the Arduino IDE is just an IDE, okay? And is different from the Arduino language. What you need to understand is that the Arduino environment is different from the Arduino compiler, which is AVR G++, which is also different from the Arduino uploader, which is different from the Arduino IDE. So you can use many other IDEs, providing that they have some support for Arduino, of course. It might be more difficult to set them up than the Arduino IDE, but you have to know it's possible. For example, there is an Arduino plugin for Visual Studio Code, which can verify, compile, and upload your code to your Arduino board. If you liked this video, subscribe to get more tutorials like this in the future. Also, check out my online courses so you can learn Arduino step by step in an efficient way by practicing and directly going to the point. Links in the description. Alright, thank you for watching. See you in the next tutorial or in one of my courses.